as an author specializing in diverse and multicultural children's books, as well as the novels for young people and a groundbreaking memoir. She has appeared on BBC News, uh, Newsnight, GMTV, and on several BBC radio stations. Her work has been published in the Times Online and the Telegraph, and she has been profiled um, in the Independent and Stylist magazine. Through her coaching programs, she is dedicated to helping women with a message, find their voice tell their stories and make exponential income and impact as authors and change makers. SubhanAllah, mind blowing, right? Definitely this is the time to uh, be a change maker, of course, within your comfort zone and, and, and your level and faith. So without further ado, welcome Naima Robert. Let me, give me one moment guys, let me just, Check and see here. I think we're just uh, experiencing a little bit of technical difficulties. I think it just takes a few moments for, um, there we go. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. <laughs> wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How are you guys doing? Alhamdulillah, the floor is all yours. Fantastic. Bismillah wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. A huge welcome to every single one of you that has taken the time out of your day this Saturday to be here with the Being Me family and all the amazing speakers that you are going to be listening to. Uh, I would like to firstly just take a few moments to do what I always do when I'm in front of people and we're going to be speaking about, you know, things that are important in our lives. And that is to just take a pause and say, Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. The reason I do this is because there are some people who intended to come to this event and it was not written for them and they're not here. And then I'm sure there are some of you who didn't ever intend to come. Maybe when you heard about being me happening in Toronto, you're like, ah, I'll give that a miss. And you didn't get your ticket. And then you thought you had missed out. And then SubhanAllah, like here you are. And if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed you with being in the presence of those who remember him, and those who are striving for his pleasure. This is indeed a blessing that we should be grateful for. So before anything else happens, say Alhamdulillah that you're here. And I pray that this gathering gives you what it is that you need. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has written that you are here for a specific purpose. He knows what it is and maybe you do too. But whatever it is that is your need, my dear sister, I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala facilitates you getting it here, inshallah ta'ala. Okay, so with that being said, I would like to share with you a few thoughts, a few perspectives on the issue of time. As you know, my talk is entitled Race Against the Clock and Never have clocks been more important than they are right now, right? Obviously, we are in living in unprecedented times. I don't like to use negative language to describe anything. This is an unusual situation that we are in. Now, while there is a global pandemic happening and there are really urgent issues happening on the front line, alhamdulillah, the majority of us are simply at home. We are on lockdown, we're in quarantine, we're self-isolating. And if there's one thing we have a lot more of, it is time. Take out the school runs, take out the madrasa run, take out the soccer practice, take out the seemingly endless trips to the shops for we don't even know what now, like why were we going shopping so many times a week, right? And, and, and all the other things that we were doing, whether it was visiting friends, visiting family, going for a coffee, whatever it is, all of a sudden, all of those are taken out and we're left with a day that seems to be really quite wide and expansive. And so with Ramadan coming up, 
I just wanted to focus our attention on this issue of, of time. Okay, now some of you may be listening and thinking, what is that sister talking about? I don't see any free time here. What I see is my kids at home all the time, my husband home all the time, and everybody wants feeding, and everybody wants entertaining, and everybody needs something from me. Ah! Like, give me my life back, right? So I get it. It's not the same for everyone. And the fact of the matter is, every single one of us is actually going through this whole journey in our own unique way, based on our unique circumstances and our unique person. Introverts right now, they're like, yes, this is the life. The extroverts right now are like, oh my goodness, they'll be out of this house, I'm gonna get stir crazy. But every one of us could use a reframe. Now, what is a reframe? Reframe is something that I, I find so, so important. And I always, always encourage my clients, my students, people I speak to, to make use of this tool that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us. What the reframe is, is if you imagine right now, you're seeing me in the frames of this screen. If I turn my frame, you're gonna see something slightly different. See some uh, rather struggling tea lights, right? But I haven't changed, I'm still here. The plant hasn't gone anywhere, it's still here. And even though you can't see them, the tea lights are still there. So all that's changed is my frame. All that's changed is my focus. And so if we look at our current situation and coming Ramadan with the frame of anything negative, whether it's uh, inconvenience, whether it is um, fear or sadness, or loss or frustration if we choose that as our frame we will find plenty to focus on there are always negative things to focus on right but what i'm inviting you to do is to choose the frame that gets you the result that you want because i am sure if you're anything like me you don't want to go into Ramadan and spend Ramadan in a state of sadness, in a state of fear or panic or frustration, or just feeling really upset or bothered by the situation. None of us wants to be living in a space of everything is inconvenient, nothing is going right, everything is messed up, like nothing could, you know, nothing good can come of this. That's not a positive place to be in. And the fact of the matter is that every inconvenience has another side to it, just like everything good in our lives has another side to it. I'd like to share the example with you of fasting in Ramadan. Most of us consider fasting to be 100% positive thing. We do it, we're happy to do it, we can't wait to do it. Alhamdulillah, so many blessings, so much barakah, etc., etc. But allow yourself to think for a minute of the cost of fasting. Does it not cost your body something to go hungry? It does, right? Don't you miss out on certain things because you're fasting? Well, of course you do. But we are so used to focusing and using the frame of gratitude when we look at Ramadan that we almost forget that there is a, like some kind of price to pay. Same with Salah, same with good deeds, same with everything, right? So if that's the case, if we are able to choose our focus and actually focus on the things that are going to give us the result that we want, then how do we want to focus our time right now and in Ramadan. We can look at it two ways. We can look at it from the frame of inconvenience that with now, without the prayer in the masjid and you know, with, with children at home and with husband at home and you know, no, no people coming around, it's almost like there's too much time, yeah? Or the time is too cramped or we feel we won't be able to get any alone time, right? Or we worry that we won't be able to keep the children calm or organized. Or we worry that they won't be as involved in Ramadan, you know, without all the trips to the masjid and trips to madrasa and, you know, trips to granny and, 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 and uncles and aunties. And, and we worry that for some, somehow, the spirit of Ramadan will 
will be will be lost somehow and we worry about our children worry about the, the, the atmosphere in the home now what i'm going to invite you to do is to firstly reframe the time that you have now and i'm asking you to do that whether you have all of a sudden received this huge chunk of free time or you actually have less free time than you had before because you have your children or your spouse or whoever at home. All right, sound like them guys. I think we're just experiencing some momentarily technical difficulties, but uh, inshallah we should be back shortly. We'll just wait for Sister Naima to come back on. Um, just wanted to share some, some gems with you. Um, one gem that uh, a sister put on the comments was that um, change equals uncertainty, which equals opportunity. And I think that really uh, resonated with me because you know, through change, um, you know, you go through this roller coaster of emotions. Uh, some are positive, some are, um, you know, sad, some are um, stressing, but then you get through that and you see the outcome and the results. And that's where the opportunity is. So it was, it was interesting to see that comment. I really love that. Um, let me share some of the comments that you guys are sharing. Let's see that I'm seeing with you guys right now. Comment where you're coming from, who you're watching with. All right, let's see. All right, I think we will continue to have our lecture with Sister Naima. So let's, uh, there we go. All right, go ahead, Sister Naima. Okay, I don't know what happened there, but bismillah. So what I was asking you to do is to really reframe this gift of time that you have, whether you all of a sudden have a huge chunk of time that's available to you or you don't and you actually have less free time but you have more time with your loved ones either way i really invite you to see this as a gift if this was the last ramadan that you had to share with your loved ones or whoever you have around you to spend on your own, to spend with your husband, to spend with your kids, whatever the situation is. If this was the last Ramadan you had, how would you choose to spend it? Because the reality is we all know that death is the only certainty. And especially now more than ever, we know that not everybody has been promised a Ramadan, even in the two weeks that we have left or less than two weeks now, right? So cherish the time, the gift of time that you've been given and be intentional with how you use it. The first thing is reframing. The second is to rewrite the rules for your family this Ramadan, okay? There are, one of the things that we've been given is more time, either time on our own or time with our loved ones, like hands-on. And the other thing that we've been given is no outside pressure, almost no outside pressure whatsoever to do anything or to go anywhere. So we can reframe that too. Some that will be, you know, something that of course they will miss and that we're so used to having that as part of Ramadan and we, we've become accustomed to it. We get used to it. We rely on it. But let's reframe that too. What could be possible if outsiders were not involved or even other family members were not involved in your decision making on a day-to-day -day basis what could be possible what would you do differently how would you spend your time with your children what kind of food would you eat what kind of foods would you not eat how much time would you spend cooking Our apologies, everyone. I think we're just having a, a few intermittent technical difficulties, but please hang in there with us. There we go. All right, go ahead. 
I think Zoom can't handle all the awesomeness today. <laughs> Mashallah. Okay, so that, uh, we'll, we'll stick do it. with me. Thank you so much for your, uh, your patience. Stick with me, guys. We're going to reframe the time. We're going to rewrite the rules for our family. The third thing we're going to do is co-create with those within our household. Let's make this Ramadan a creation between all of us. Let's hear what the children want to do, what the teenagers would like to see, what dad would like to see, what mom would like to see, and then let's make a plan as a team. This is not going to be that Ramadan where you are basically mummy Ramadan, making everything happen for everyone, right? Okay, it's, that's not the deal. You're not going to be the one creating all the amazing dishes and, and making sure the house is spotless and looks gorgeous and filling and living your Pinterest dreams, right? No, that's not what's gonna happen. Inshallah, inshallah, we have an opportunity to co-create with our families, maybe a Ramadan that is a bit simpler, uh, maybe a bit more relaxed, maybe more focused, maybe less noisy than any Ramadan before, and maybe any Ramadan ever again. Allahu alam. So sit down with your family and ask them, guys, this is the situation that Allah's put us in. What do we want to do with this? What's the opportunity here? What could be awesome about this? What could we do together as a family to make this the most memorable Ramadan ever? and see what amazing things they come up with. And then write them down and put them up somewhere. Create a plan from there, inshallah. Don't just talk and not do anything. Take their suggestions, make a plan, put it, if you're using a Ramadan planner, put it in there. Otherwise, put something up on the wall so your whole family can see the vision for your family Ramadan, inshallah. Then the fourth thing I want to share with you is for you, my sister, to get clear on your own goals for this Ramadan for yourself, okay? We may be tempted to feel like, okay, all the pressure of Ramadan is on us. Hopefully, if you do what I told you and you do the co-creation, you will be able to alleviate some of that pressure. But let's not forget that we are living in a time of a global pandemic and there is extra stress on us, whether it's loved ones who are ill or stressed loved ones that we can't be there for, okay? Friends that we can't really be there for in the same way that we'd like to, okay? If anyone is worried about their own health or their food, children being at home, all of these are extra stresses. So my sister, I want to invite you to be really mindful of your own state. Please don't burn yourself out. We don't want this to be the Ramadan burnout. You know, when you start off all guns blazing at the beginning and you guys know what I'm talking about. You know, you've got it all planned. It looks so amazing. And then 10 days later, you're like, I can't do it anymore. Let's pace ourselves. It doesn't have to be Instagram friendly. It doesn't have to look like something from Pinterest. It just needs to be right for you and your family. We all know what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us in Ramadan. And we have, alhamdulillah, we have every opportunity to do those things in our homes. So that doesn't take away from anything. So if you need to take some time for yourself, schedule it in. If you need to have a nap in the afternoon, work it out. If you have little ones and they're napping, maybe nap with them. If you need to meal prep so that you've got time before Maghrib to read your Salah or read your Quran, etc., look at your schedule and make sure you have scheduled in self-care so you don't burn out and so that you don't start to jump on the guilty wheel and do too much and then just end up, you know, kind of like bottling it down the road, right? Uh, I know quite a few sisters have asked this question about, you know, how do I make time for myself? How you make time for yourself is by making it a priority, a priority and letting everyone in the family know, this is mommy's time to work. This is mommy's time to read, whether it hubby's there or you've got older kids or whatever arrangement you come up with. Be Creative with it, but don't leave it out because caring for yourself and your own well being, your spiritual well being, and your emotional well being and mental well being is going to be crucial. And your children need you relaxed, stable, strong, and focused, and most of all, happy. They need that from you. Okay. And really, that feeds in perfectly into my fifth point, which is relax and enjoy it. Like I said, there's some people, well, Laila, I just got a message just before we went on about the sister who lost her life to COVID. 
and inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un when i say if we make it to ramadan and we have our health our loved ones that they're safe with us in a home and we have just enough food to eat we have everything we need we have literally everything we need we of course have so much more than that but as long as we have those four things we've got nothing to complain about We've got nothing to feel sad about, nothing to moan about whatsoever. What we have is an unprecedented opportunity to make this Ramadan the most memorable Ramadan ever. And inshallah, I pray that if you do take on this advice, your children in five years time, 10 years time, you guys will be sitting together inshallah and they'll say, remember, remember that Ramadan in 2020? Yeah, during Corona, do you remember it? Do you remember what it was like? And they're going to talk about how close you were as a family and how they got to know you on a whole new level and how they managed to memorize so much more Quran than ever before. And they learned to cook and they learned to take naps with you. And they learned things about daddy that they didn't know. And they, they got to know themselves again and they got to know their family again. And they got to appreciate the true spirit of Ramadan for the first time. Wouldn't that be an amazing outcome, inshallah? I think so. My dear sisters, my time is up. So I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keeps you all safe and well and protects you. And please remember, you get to choose. So choose wisely and make the very best out of this situation. And inshallah, we will meet again one day, bi'idhnillah. Subhanak Allahumma Rabbana bihamdik ashhadu an la ilaha illa ant wa astaghfiruka wa natubu ilaik Jazakumullah khairan sister Naima it was a pleasure to host you today may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you and your family for the efforts that you've put forward um subhanallah i, I know we were having a few of the uh, freezing moments but um i have to say you really swept swept it away and um you know one thing that i keep on repeating in my head and just kind of pondering and reflecting on is when you mentioned um if this was your last ramadan yeah how would you want to live it how would you want to go through it and yeah. you know right now when you're when you're dealing with the impacts of covid it's ever surreal you know, yeah. it's like you, you, you can see the deaths, you can hear it, you know it, and it's really hitting home right in the heart, right? And yeah. subhanAllah, may, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to get to that point of what you're saying in terms of, you know, talking about the Ramadan 2020. Inshallah, Ya Rabbi, yes! <laughs> bi'ithnillah, bi'ithnillah, I pray, inshallah. I mean, and, you know, it's such a pleasure to hear all of these, you know, effective um practical tips that you're giving us you know sometimes we're just in this autopilot mode and we just kind of zoom right into it uh, only to kind of pass by these amazing moments these amazing gems these amazing gifts and the beautiful patience that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is is giving to us right and I, I think it, it's a great opportunity to take the time to unwrap that um unwrap the gift that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving to you oh so i love that yeah uh, inshallah, may Allah, you know, uh, bless you and your family. Jazakumullah heron. Um, inshallah, we get the opportunity to host you again. Um, you know, we couldn't do it at the at the conference, but now we're online. Yes. <laughs> I still want to come to Toronto though, inshallah, yes, please. You will, you will. <laughs> COVID be gone next year, inshallah. <laughs> yes, wonderful. Inshallah ta'ala. Jazakallah khair, sis. Thank well, you so much. Well, well, Take care. Assalamu alaikum. All right. So what are some of the, what are you guys thinking? What are your thoughts? What, what just happened? I, I feel a transformation coming up here. SubhanAllah. Let me see what, what's happening in these comments here. Um, give me a moment, guys. I'm just going to look at my phone. Uh, let's see. How are you feeling? Okay. People want to, um, they're reminding each other to be mindful. Okay, anything else? What's going on? Well, how are you guys responding to this? What are your thoughts? What are some gems? Share it with me. Oh, let's see. Who are you watching with? Where, where, where are you uh, attending from? 
share a gem from Sister Naima's lecture. I think a um, few things that really resonated with me is when she said to kind of um, reframe your time, right? Um, many instances you're thinking, okay, time's running out. I don't have enough time to do this. Um, something's blocking you. Well, my dear sisters and brothers, um, there's nothing blocking you right now. <laughs> so, you know, um, take a step back to embrace what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, is giving to you, right? Um, seize that moment and process it in your comfort, in the way that you, you, you process it, in the way that you feel comfortable. Um, you know, cherish that gift that he's giving to you. And, you know, she also met, mentioned to be intentional. So think about what it is you're wanting to um, achieve, you're wanting to do, you're wanting to reflect, right? Don't forget about that. And then she said to like, you know, um, rewrite your family's rules. So whether it's yourself, whether it's you and your husband, whether it's you and your kids, whether it's you and your extended family, your circle of friends, um, whoever your connections are, right? Um, look at rewriting what's good for you. And one last thing, which kind of just blew me, she was like, co-create. SubhanAllah, that's amazing, right? Like we, we don't look at it like that. Come up with your Ramadan vision board, right? And start putting some things on there. What do you want to do? You want to, you know, designate that place for prayer. Uh, you want to pre-cook uh, your meals, pre-plan your meals, um, you know, set um, a light schedule for yourself, not just for, you know, the hardcore stuff, but also for resting and wellness, right? So definitely take that, uh, pay attention to that. Um, I'm also seeing a lot of people coming from, let's see, Mrs. Saga, where else? Oh, that's another thing they were. So I see messages of involving your family and planning your Ramadan. Awesome, awesome, awesome. What else? Share some gems, share some thoughts. How are you feeling after these two powerhouse ladies who have just, you know, shared these amazing gems with us? Uh, I know that it's making me feel revived. It's making me feel like I want to right now go and, um, you know, put some stuff in my bullet journal, um, you know, call my nieces and nephews, come up with a plan and just start going at it. Um, we have a lot of people coming up from South Africa. Ooh, self-care for moms. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I can imagine if you have a house with your kids and, and others, you know, you definitely want to take the time to uh, replenish yourself and take care of yourself, right? Uh, ooh, I see someone come, uh, attending from Fort McMurray, Alberta, Canada. Awesome. Oh, that's a great one. I just saw an amazing comment. Amazing gem. Help yourself so that you can help others. Amazing. That is something that, you know, definitely we need to adopt in our own way and continue to not just like, you know, help ourselves. But once we've understood that, continue to extend that helping hand to others as well, because that's that exchange of support there from your community, from your family and from your friends. All right. Let's see, anything else? Okay, so just wanted to give you guys a little bit of a heads up. We do have a few more, a few speakers, oh, I shouldn't say a few, many speakers coming up, inshallah, um, that I will be introducing. So we have Amira Al Gawabi, who I'll be introducing in the next few minutes. We have uh, Sister Razia Hamidi, we have Sister Haifa Yunus, Sister Tasneem Al Kiak. Um, Sister Tamia Zubair, and then we have um, a surprise finish for all of you. I can't tell you who it is. I can't tell you what it's about, unfortunately. Sorry, my lips are sealed right now. I can't, but um, it's definitely worthwhile. Uh, it definitely packs the ending with a punch and really sets you on that launch that Sister Hallie was talking about to launch your Ramadan 2020, inshallah, on the most amazing start, right? So I, I pray that we continue to do this and um, you'll, you'll, you'll be able to experience Ramadan 2020. 
So I see um, one of um, my most favorite aunties, Sister Amina, she's sharing that we need to prepare by getting up for Tahajjud and reciting Quran every day. So that way you're starting to build a routine. Great tip, Amina auntie. That's definitely something that, you know, for some is a challenge and it's a, it's a struggle. And um, I know for myself that it definitely helps to have a, a community uh, around you where we can support each other and remind each other of these amazing actions that inshallah will allow us to gain a multitude of blessings okay. okay so i think without further ado i'd like to introduce you to our next speaker um our next speaker as well has joined us in past years on the being me platform uh she's very um uh, well known in the community. She's always, mashallah, positive and uh, working towards a purpose in order to help our community at large. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about her. So Amira Al Gawabi is a journalist and human rights advocate. Along with appearances on Canadian and intentional news networks, Amira has written and produced stories and commentary for CBC Radio, The Ottawa Citizen, McLean's, the Walrus and the Literary Review of Canada and the Globe, of, the Globe and Mail, mashallah. She is con a contributing columnist for the Toronto Star. Between 2012 and 2017, Amira promoted the civil liberties of Canadian Muslims as, human, as a human rights officer and later as director of communications at the National Council of Muslims. She now works in Canada, um, in Canada's labor movement in digital communications, helping to champion progressive issues and causes online. And I definitely uh, constantly see Sister Amira online and sharing her amazing gems and, uh, you know, information that really hits home and truly inspires myself and I know our